Uh, we are down two people currently, but one should be showing up later. Um, last we left off, you guys had made it back to um, Greenest, and you are currently awaiting to hear back from uh, Leosin. Yeah. And you guys were making a plan of what you guys wanted to do. So Our plan was to wait until the um, the elf, I can't remember his name, I apologize, uh, was to come and find us and tell us that because he, he was going to take a band of people out, or a band of people were going to leave the camp. Yes. So we were waiting a day to go with them, or to at least talk about going with them, I should say. Right. Oh, and while we're waiting... I want to look for an opportunity to have a private conversation with Corporal. Okay. You find your your opportunity uh, later at night when everybody else has gone to sleep. Um, but he see, he stayed up later than the rest of you. And you take your moment to talk to him. What do uh, you say? Corporal, uh, can I have a word with you quickly? Yeah, what's up, boo? <laughs> so I was just thinking about our arrangements, and, you know, we just sort of ran into each other on the road, and I think that I may have made certain assumptions about you that weren't true, but all the same, I believe that we have each proven our value to each other. Um, and for that reason, I wanted to propose an arrangement for um, such objects of value as we might come into on our travels. Um... I'd like to propose simply that, uh, you know, if you find something and loan it out, keep track of it, um, there's an expectation of return or some sort of agreeable reimbursement at such point as we all um, split up. Um, so, like, for instance, I have this scroll here. To be honest, the reason I'm holding on to it is because um, I can copy it down in my spell book. But I can't do that yet because I don't have the resources. So, you know, if you want, you can hold on to it for now. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I trust you enough. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure I would trust very many uh, of the others in the party. But uh, if you want to hold on to this roll until it's convenient for you, I'm not too worried about it. Fair enough. Um, we, we can leave it there. Sounds good. Just, as I said, um, keep track. I owe you for this. Um, and given that this is now... But before, you had just sort of given this off to me. But since I'm saying now that I owe it back to you, how about 15 gold for those identification spells? It would cost you a lot more if you went to a shop, believe me. You know what? You came to me as a man. Let, let's make it 20. You, you earned it, bud. I <laughs> give him a firm handshake. That's so that's so adorable. All right. Uh, you guys do your transaction. Anything else? Nope, that's all I wanted to talk about. Okay. So you head off to bed. 20 gold richer. Oracle goes to bed, having a little bit more respect for you than he did before. Not much, but a little bit. <laughs> um, so you guys take your time to rest, heal up, gather all your spells. Um, Lumeroth, you actually sleep the whole night. You actually don't hear anything from your sword, which you think is probably a good thing. He's probably really mad at me. <laughs> um, you guys wake up in the morning and uh, Governor Night Hill has one of his servants come to each one of your doors separately and says uh, the government would like to have you for breakfast as a farewell uh, gathering um, for all that you have done for uh, the city or town of Greenest and uh, as one more thanks of appreciation alright I 
So you guys all head down to breakfast. Cover Night Hills all the way at the... <laughs> he stands up at the head of the table and he goes, My friends, my comrades, thank you for coming to breakfast before you guys leave your, on your journey. Uh, I just wanted to give you one last big hearty meal along with these packs over here. And he points to these traveling packs full of supplies and food and everything that will last you uh, three weeks uh, traveling. Um, along with some supplies that you guys may or may not need on your travels. Um, as well, I have outfitted a small purse of gold. Uh, he tells you that it is 250 gold in each purse. Uh, uh, for inns and comforts, and if you guys want a more hearty meal than jerky and biscuits. Um, this is more than I... This is less than I think you guys deserve, but the least of which I could give to you guys... Um, and thanks for doing everything that you have for our town. Um, at this, I'm going to stand up actually on whatever. Am I like sitting on a bench? No, on a chair. Uh, on a chair? Okay. I will stand up on my chair, which should put me about at eye level with Glumaroth, I'm thinking. Um, <laughs> Maybe. If he's sitting. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm going to raise whatever I'm drinking, and I'm going to say. Sir, um, well, of course, shouldn't have done it without us. All the same, th thank you very much for your hospitality and for giving, giving this to us out of, honestly, uh, production that was left after, um, those folks came through. Thank you, and, uh, may this, uh, toast to our friendship. Here, here. He drains his whole wine glass in, in one gulp. Wine for breakfast? <laughs> Heck yeah, wine for breakfast. You know, Luba off is partaking. Yep. Luba four, however, is not allowed to have wine. <laughs> As I shoot him with a lance. You know how you sound when you drink. He nods his head and asks for water. <laughs> uh, when is the camp... Uh, when is the uh, caravan leaving? Uh, well, uh, I have heard that Leosin is getting ready to pack up, but he uh, sent one of his men forward and said, uh, whenever you guys are ready, uh, he'll be ready as well. Um, but do you know, take your time. They are still kind of road weary and injured ridden, so they might take a while anyway. So sit, enjoy. You know, I also have some stuff that you can take to them as well, and. He uh, he points to another three bags off to the side, just full of stuff for them as well. When we're ready to move, are we ready to move forward? Then are, are we are we are we full and, and plentiful? The halfling probably ever. isn't. Are they ever? No. I I, I grab a biscuit and say maybe. Right. Let's head let's head over to the caravan. I'm gonna pick up the three bags. Doing that I can. Yeah, you can carry them all. Uh, okay, good. I'll, I'll pick up the three bags and uh, head out the door toward the caravan. Sure. I mean, they're not terribly heavy. They're just full of like beef jerky and biscuits. Oh, fair. Yeah. It's like carrying all the groceries. Gotta make sure I have them all in one hand. <laughs> yeah. Every guy does it. They got like 15 <laughs> in one arm and the other arm's empty, ready to just open the door. Absolutely. Otherwise, uh, I have to walk down to my garage. And... Yep. <laughs> Alright, so you guys meet up with the caravan. Uh, Leosin and his band of merry men uh, are all kind of limping and jiving their way into heading toward the front door. And uh, Leosin says, uh, Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you guys. Uh, are you guys ready for our travels? I'll step up with the bag, sir. I have a I have a few pouches here, or some bags of food here from Governor Nighthill. I believe that we are all rested, healed, and ready to follow you and the caravan on forward. Awesome. Um, he Incidentally, tells, where are we going? Uh, well, actually, we are going to go meet up with uh, a paladin of Torm named Orinthar Froom. Um, he is, 
he is somebody that uh, has helped me in the past and is also very adamant about... I know my voice really doesn't help with this thing. There you go. Um, it is just to the north. Um, and uh, he says... Um, uh, I need you, uh, I, however, I need you guys to return to the, uh, cultist camp. Um, you guys know your way around it now. If the cultists are preparing to conduct another raid or a larger, or a large body of them marches away, or any substantial is carried into or out of the cave, I need to know. If you have a chance to get into the camp and look around again, that would be the ideal way to spot if anything's changed. Um... I don't recommend getting captured, he tells you as well. Um, but it'd be a great favor if you guys were to do that, so that he could know of their, you know, of what they're doing and everything like that. Is there anything specific you need us to figure out, or just try to figure out best we can what they're planning? Uh, pretty much what they're planning. I, I would like to know if they're going to try and attack. You know, if they're getting ready to attack something, if they're getting ready to go pack up the camp and run somewhere else, um, because both of those would interest me greatly in either running to the next town to defend or running to catch up to find them and possibly find this dragon hatchery that they supposedly have going on. Would you like us to come back to the town in a few days' time to report what we find, or are we to continue on with, continue on without you uh he goes uh who is the is there any magical people in your group uh okay and he hands you a scroll of uh that sends out a message you can send a, a transport message to him instantly telling him what's going on um it's stuck to like 150 words kind of thing but you can convey a good message in 150 words it's not a tweet. <sighs> not 160 characters? No. 150 words. 150 words. Excellent. Lachlan, thank the man. <laughs> thank you, sir. You're welcome. And I thank you for helping me on this. Unfortunately, as you guys can see, my men are still not fully ready to be able to have to take on battle if need be. Do we have horses or other means of transportation? Or are we hoofing it? No pun intended. Mm. Uh, uh, a guard overhears this question and uh, looks over at you and says, uh, if you guys need uh, horses, Governor Nighthill says, 10 gold for the entire party and they're yours. Um, That's a good deal. That's a good deal. That's all right. I'll reach in my pack and pull, about ten, and pull out 10 gold and, and hold it up. Where do, I said, where do I buy? Uh, he says, uh, go back about 50 feet, take a left, and then uh, you'll smell the horse manure before you hit the horses, so you'll be good. How many people do we have in our party? Four? Uh, now, uh, now six. Six? Okay, we have six. Uh, now go a horkle. Had it come on over with me, we'll grab two horses each and bring it back for the party. Sounds good. I'll flip you two gold. Thank you. Thanks, nice Sheriff. Alright, I guess I'm going to take the two with me and head over to the horse, to the stables, flip ten gold to the uh, stable master, and grab our horses if we can. You grab some horses, uh, they have two war horses as well, um, very helpful for the dragonborn who are a little bit of a heavier stock than what a normal horse would take, um, and then they actually have a, a sturdy pony for you as well, little guy. <laughs> um... So you guys go up uh, and you guys get these you guys get yourself situated put the saddles on put your food over in the correct spots and uh, Leosin says uh, if I don't hear from you guys in two days um, I'm gonna head in that direction but hopefully I hear back from you guys sooner and we can make a decision for at that point <clears throat> I don't think you have any we will uh, we'll send word it's within two days' time, hopefully, regardless of our situation. 
and we're ready to we're ready to move out when your men are. Okay. Uh, he says, "Okay, good luck. Um, you guys will get all the information I'm looking for, um, and hopefully we can join up and uh, we'll be well rested and we can fight as a group if we need to, or learn what we may and continue forward and trying to stop this cult." Nothing could possibly go wrong. Nothing at all. So you guys split off. They head toward the north. You guys head off back toward the uh, raiders' camp. You guys are able to make it there quite a bit faster because you have horses. Um, so you guys make it about... We should tie them up some distance away. Yeah. I maybe say, maybe okay. in a different direction than we approached the first two times. So, so which which direction would you guys like to come from? Here? Bottom left. Bottom, Bottom west. Okay, we'll just put our, you guys on the on top of the overview map there. Alright, so you guys... How are these walls? Uh, about 10 feet. Okay. So and then, like, so, like, where that tower was... That second level is probably another five feet, so that's probably about fifteen feet up. Okay. So, so I mean, could we find a spot to like safely scale down here, or do we really need to come in, like, from this direction? Ten feet's really not that big of a deal. We could, yeah. we should be able to, just... especially sliding down a ledge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's up to you. Um, what, let's uh, let's. Are there? Do you guys, are you guys just walking straight up to the edge of the camp there, or? We, we've tied. We've tied our. We've tied the horses down. What? Uh, 30, 30 to sixty feet away. Thirty to how say thirty. I would put feet him away. further than that. I would put him out of sight. Okay. Myself. Well, where's the nearest tree line? We're gonna need something to tie them. To. Uh, about one hundred and fifty feet, uh, off the map. Oh, so time just sort of behind the trees. Yeah, we'll just let's tie him into the tree line uh, next to the trees, and let's walk that 150 feet toward the toward the edge. Uh, as we get uh, within 40 feet, let's start sneaking and try to get toward the edge, or at least send a horkle out and tell us what he sees. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll assume we're 40 feet out. Yep. And it's kind of tall, tallish grass. I mean, it's still higher than you, but. Uh, no, I will gladly get my sneak on. And again, I'm gonna do my normal routine of I'll stay like sixty-ish feet behind him, like close enough to help out if something goes amiss. Yeah, halflings do have that natural sneak ability. It's kind of annoying. Uh, uh, actually, I don't. Cause I'm a stout halfling. Oh, you picked stout. Okay. Sorry, guys. Um, Alright, so I need sneak rolls from the two of you. Oh, damn. Yeah, Horkle, you sneaking. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hell yeah. He is, they're stealthy little people. Yeah. Alright, and you're almost as sneaky, even though you're, you don't have that trait. Um... So you guys both, you are able to make it up to the edge. Again, kind of army marine crawling it uh, slowly but surely to make sure. And uh, when you look down, you see that the camp is actually abandoned. Uh, are there any remnants, like uh, tents and things like that? Uh, you know, there's some tattered tents, um, a, a trough or two for, like, the horses and stuff. Um you you know you see random bits and pieces of things all over the place but overall it there's nobody there all right i, I go report my findings all right we should so. still we should uh if there's nothing there we we should we should investigate the camp the best we can especially the leftover generals tents and towers but still trying to be Relatively sneaky, I would say. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. 
I don't know. I'm thinking if they've left, we may even just want to spread out and comb the place. I mean, maybe any building big enough to hide someone we should be together for, but... Fair point. Well, let's, uh, then let's spread out. There's six of us, let's spread out in, you know, the six different directions. I'll just take right down the middle. So. Yeah, why don't we stay within, say, 20 feet of each other and just kind of spread out and come through? We stay good 30 feet from each other, I think. Sure. Alright, right. so... We're yeah. gonna do it this way. One, two, three, four. There's four of you. One, two, three, four. Okay, so Lachlan finds. Doop, 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 doop. Roll a d6. A four. Damn. Alright, you find five winged kobolds. Um. And roll a perception check for me, please. Yeah. You guys all separately are doing this, correct? I mean, we're staying within sight of each other. Okay. We're just sort of making a search and that All right. Well, they're not surprised. You're not. Sup they don't have surprise on you, at least. That's nice. All right. Um, uh, everybody perception or just him? Just him. Okay. Um. You guys are far enough apart where he kind of sees them kind of like as he's walking around an area and sees them. They're on the ground currently, but you can, they have wings, so you can tell that they're winged ones. Um, they don't see you just yet, um, but you, see, you definitely see them. Okay, I'm going to sort of in a direction away from them, try to like gesture towards my comrades like... You did this? Like. Oh, you're, oh, you're pointing, oh, you're pointing in the direction, okay. Alright. Like, hey, there's people over here. Wait, I'm gonna, well, I'm going to, uh, you know what? How far, how far are they out from Lockwood? 20 feet. 20 feet, so that puts us, what, about 40 feet away from the rest of us? They are at least the closest to, to, I might be a little longer than that. Like it'd be like it'd be like fifty sixty, yeah. Oh, uh, and also at this moment, I'm gonna cast mage armor on myself. Okay. I'm gonna start. Well, I'm gonna, I'd like to. I'm gonna walk toward Lachlan and then walk forward uh, toward the camp. Are they Are they? What are they doing? Do we? Do I see them? Here, me first. Do I see them? Uh, I'll get rolling perception. Uh, well, he he whistled and like pointed. Yeah, so I would take the 19. Um, yeah, you're able to see them fairly clearly. You can see that there's five of them. And they are doing... Uh, they're kind of just milling around. Uh, it seems like they're just some stragglers kind of thing. I'm going um, to motion for the rest of the camp to kind of follow me. I'm going to walk on ahead and whistle. Uh, they all turn in your direction, and uh, and they all kind of start heading in your direction. They don't say anything, and they get ready to attack. Um, everybody's within an area. I need everybody to roll initiative. Do, do, do. All right. Did you see that initiative? Yep. Gave me an error and said you wanted to send it to Tracker, but no valid token was selected. Oh, yeah, I didn't give tokens, but we're not like. Oh, in. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Since it's the group, let's just roll 
1d20. Wow. So everybody but Lachlan goes ahead of them. Um, so first up would be Horgol. Uh, okay, so uh, where am I like situationally compared to them? Um, are you to the left or to the right of... Are you closer to Lumeroth or are you closer to Lachlan when you guys are spreading out? Um, well, I was like, specifically thinking that I would want to be near Lumeroth in range of his divine spark. <laughs> was my mental image. <laughs> Alright, so you be to his left. Um, so you would be about 70 feet away, 80 feet. Um, so you wouldn't be able, I mean, you could dash all the way there. You could, you have a short bow though, right? Yeah, I do. And, yeah. um, my short bow gets all the same stuff as far as like sneak attack and crits and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, you wouldn't get sneak attack specifically, but, uh, what is it? I think there's, you get surprise, which is pretty much the same. Yeah, so I, I get advantage on anybody that hasn't taken a turn, and if right. I'm surprised, I get a crit, right? Yep. Uh, okay, I guess I'll pull out my short bow and uh, fire away. Fire away. <coughs> oh, you definitely hit. Oh. Okay, and then... Uh, Hot damn. Oh. You, uh, I guess they're not surprised because he kind of yelled at them, right? Uh, they, they'd still be surprised about your shot because they were looking in his direction, not so much yours. Because mm -hmm. um, you're still kind of like farther back and kind of behind him a little bit. So you would still get it, but the 19 definitely hits um, no matter what. So you get all the damage. By the way, guys, um, apparently um, Boland is dropping out. Okay. So. It's, it's a little sad. The Shield okay. Brothers. Uh, so that actually be seven if I get my crit. Right. Uh, s seven total. Yeah, because you said no sneak attack, right? Yeah, I gotta relook up the um the rogue class. The rogue class is always they've got so many little ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah, <laughs> that's why it's been so long. Like I had everything on lockdown, and now I'm like, wait. I know I went away. I know I went on vacation. Um, do, 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 do. I know, I wish I had my player's handbook out and about. What are you trying to figure out? Uh, if uh, the row gets like the surprise hit and it hits, does it still get the sneak attack damage? Hold on, I'm pulling up my handbook. No, I, have one I mean, too. it just says... It, you know, you get an extra 1d6 damage to one creature you hit with an attack if you have advantage on the attack roll. Okay, yeah, so roll another d6. I knew it was something. It wasn't just your regular roll. Seven plus... Uh, actually, I think I, I rolled 2d6 for my sneak attack now. Uh, yeah, at level 3, it's 2d6. Yeah. Wow. Right, okay, there you go. Even better. That so that should be uh, double 2, right? Or is two, that... 2d6? Yeah, 2d6 is the total, so it's 10 plus 7, 17 damage. Um, yeah, that definitely would just put right out through its eye, and it just drops immediately. And the other four just kind of look at the head guy, and are like... Uh, where did that come from? <laughs> They're just kind of confused, like, where that arrow came from. Um, did you want to move or anything, or you want to stay where you are? Um, well, I 
I don't want to move. I don't want to move ahead of uh, Numera, but I'll go up to where he is now. Okay. If I'm not. All right. So you move up to him. You kind of move slightly to the right. Move up to him, um, and that'll end your. Yes, pretty much. Pretty freaking much. Um, Alright, next up is Lumeroth. How far am I from him? 30, uh, less than 30 feet? Uh, yeah, about that. Alright. You could go up there and swing at the first one in front of you, yeah. I'm gonna stand, uh, I'm gonna move um, within 15 feet of them and use my breath weapon. Oh, okay. Like, come at me! <gasps> um, okay. Your constitution modifier is a two? Constitution modifier is a one. A one, okay. So one plus your... So you have nine, eleven as your DC. But they have that. Oh my god. <laughs> they totally failed. Takes 2d6 damage. I'll fail to save you. We're gonna roll that. Absolutely. 2d6. Wow. <laughs> wow. You did max damage. Let me make sure that that is. Pretty sure that is. Uh. Come on. Not that. Pretty sure that kills it though. Uh, yep. Yeah. It... Oh, it's a radius, isn't it? It's a 15 foot radius in front of me. Oh, God, you melted their faces off. Wait, you're acid or poison? Uh, poison. Oh, okay. You poison them, and then you see, like, boils coming up in their throats, and then they burst, and then they fall to the ground, all dead. You I'll just. Pass, so I'm gonna pass the sword. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stop trying to like take my wand out of my pocket at this point, just sort of slowly put it back. <laughs> what do you think, boys? Was that a show or what? My dro can't see shit I'll during the flat. day, so I'm just rubbing my eyes. <laughs> what just happened? Yeah. Walking. I say they walk forward and lead down just to look through the bodies. Okay. You don't really find anything. You just. You find crude short swords and uh, a well-worn sling-like thing with some rocks. Falco, I'm sorry that I couldn't give you a uh, nice robe to wear, on you know, with your pretty dress. I'd say I pick up the tattered and burning <laughs> poison <laughs> robe. <laughs> Full of, like, boils and green stuff. <laughs> like, oh, you... <laughs> Uh, do we remember how I did the, uh, the thing with the sword? It was neutral. No, no, I know, but the rolls. What did I pick? What did I end up going with? Um, constitution? Was it Constitution? Yeah. Roll another Constitution. <sighs> And if I remember correctly, okay. All right, so that gets that. Ooh. Ooh. Uh. So the sword um tells you you better pull me out the next time. Or you might end up hurting somebody that you like. <laughs> so I pause on. <laughs> oh, you're a hoot. Let's move. Humorously, everyone else hears me say that, and they don't yep. hear the other piece of it. <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't. You're a hoot. Um, all right. <clears throat> so you kill a few of the stragglers. Um, you don't really. Well, you killed them. 
Um, killed them all. You killed them with poison breath. Yes. Not uh, just the men. Sorry. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, uh, let's continue. Let's finish uh, patrolling the camp and see what else we see. All right. Um. Everybody, roll another perception check. Marco, you don't see crap. Yeah, if I'm blind during the day, I'm just like completely the sunlight. Right. All right. Um, so Lumeroth and Lachlan, you guys actually notice for the first time as you look over toward the uh, head um, tent that there's actually a cave entrance there over in the corner. Into random caves. Let's do it. Why not, right? What could go wrong? Um, as we go in, I'm going to cast the light on the. And by the way, I uh, forgot to mention this, but I want to make like a. Like just a cloth wrap for my hand. My, my right hand for holding my wand. Okay. Okay. And then um, I'm going to cast the light on the end of it and just sort of. I have a little flashlight as well. Fair enough, fair enough. I have to reach the entrance of the cave. I will unsheath my sword, pull out my shield, and uh, walk toward it. Okay. You guys are just going to walk uh, in toward it? I walk behind the <laughs> Um. You know what? Kind of wish, Lachlan, that mm -hmm. you would have uh, cast a light on me. I can do that. Is that the yep. reason? I can cast that spell as much as well, I can. Well, I'm thinking, why don't, we cast, why don't we cast light on at least the sword or shield or something so we have kind of illumination as we walk into the cave that will be leading the uh, team the party. Fair enough. What would you prefer? Let's put it on the shield. Switch my spell over. Okay. When I make it have a nice little glow to it. Alright, so you put it on the shield? Yeah. Letting the shield go. Alright, um. You just kind of walk in normally, um, into the cave entrance. Kind of just want to know, like, what speed you're going. Are you going. F are you going to uh, run in there? Are you walking in there? Are you going super slow? I'm going to carefully walk into the cave with my shield. With the shield up, kind of looking over the top of it if I can. And I slowly, at a, very, at a slow pace, take a couple steps into the cave and try to see what I can see at first before I walk all the way in. Yeah, like, I don't know how much room there is to be, like, super stealthy here, but at least, like, being careful and ready to react if something happens. What I'm thinking. Okay. Um, I'll walk about five feet in the cave and look forward. What do I see? Roll a perception check. Hold on. Sorry. Wrong. 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 The, the cave is dark, right? Uh, well, it's a cave. It's not full. It's not very illuminated by any means. So that means that my eyesight isn't busted anymore. Like I could actually see things. Sure. Probably. Okay, so I, I, I just kind of peek my head over like Lumeroth's shoulder and also kind of try to gaze what I can see with my badass draw eyes of darkness. See, I can roll something good. Oh, all right. Finally, a 16. All right. Um, so, 
you both are actually able to see that they're about 30 feet in are two dragon claws. Um, like detached dragon claws, or can we not? Oh no, no, these are these are a type of creature. Oh. Um, let me see if I can get a picture here. Um, actually, I have a picture on the back of my book here. Do, do the dragon claws notice us as they walk in with a the light? Uh, they are a medium humanoid. Um, they just, they're, they, again, these are kind of different than dragonborns. They're a little bit more rough around the edges than a dragonborn would be. Dragonborn's more, you know, you know the shape of a dragonborn, but these are a little bit more dragonish than they are dragonborn. Kind of like kind of the in betweens, kind of like like how humans would have evolved over time. Guys, there is a couple of dragon claws sitting in the back of this cave. I don't think we should fight them in here if we're going to do it like this. By the way. Oh wait. No, that's that's the. Uh, oh, that's a half dragon. That's a half dragon. That that's, came up on my search. Oh well. Yeah. Alright. Think a little less badass than that. I was trying to find a better yeah, I, picture. I, I found this guy. That is one of the. Yeah. Dragon attack, right? What? That's like one of the dragon lieutenant guys or whatever that we fought previously. Okay. Uh, we well, the idea. the first picture that he sent was actually Resmir. Right. Yep. With your sword. Right. Yep. Oh. Okay. Again, I'm going to say to the party, I uh, I spy with my little eye a couple of uh, big ass baddies in the back here, and I'm whispering as I say, "Bro, like, guys, there's a uh, there's a couple of." Uh, of like dragons in the back of this cave and I really think we should start backing out a little bit. You know, I could turn that into one of them probably pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I fight better in darkness. <laughs> How big is cave? Uh, as you are kind of like seeing it, the uh, um, here, I'll give you the picture. Uh, the the height of this, when you walk in, is about 30 feet. Oh, it's um, a cave. oh, yeah. You guys can only see the beginning, though. Okay, right. Yeah. I, uh, we can only see the, the beginning because it's, uh, it, it's like blocked off. Oh, uh, it's dark. I like have it's a really far dark vision right now. I do too. Right. I've, I'm wearing the helmet. Well, I'm oh, that's true. I'm the helmet now, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, as you can see, like, there's, like, a wall drop and some stairs. Like, you can't see all this. You right. can't see this entire cavern. You can see fairly deep, but you can't see, like, the whole thing and the whole layout off the bat. But, yeah, I mean, you yeah, you get a sense. Um, I know it has been less than a day, but it may behoove us to send a message to the camp that we are going to explore this dungeon. And that they... And because... If the if this dungeon goes further than what we may know, we may not we may not make it out in time, and they may come looking for us. Uh, let's back out real quick while we have this conversation. But well, right, we're kind of okay. Back yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. So first of all, if you're saying it's two dragon claws, I have no doubt that we can take them, especially if we can manage to help on them. Um. Second of all, we only have one scroll. I would prefer to wait to see this um, well, um, perhaps I'll tell you what I will pen the first part of the message now um, I'm just going to use a few words to say that we found this cave and are exploring it and then I mean in the basic location and okay. if necessary I can send it off immediately in an emergency and if not we can wait to have more detail yeah. Then, if we're going to explore this cave, I say we need, we need to get some kind of... Uh, I'm not going to walk up and see it. I'm going to be able to give out the, the 
is there any way we can is there any way we can sneak up on these and and, and uh, you know create distraction I suppose well two of us can see in the dark fairly well so what if the two of us who can't are the distraction um I, I right, draw so the light spell here's what I propose move the light spell off of my shield and back onto you Let's uh, let me walk into the cave and have Porco and Nako kind of sneak in through within the darkness. Hopefully, cross your fingers they're going to do well. And uh, I will be the distraction to allow them to do some kind of damage to these creatures. So I'm thinking, do you think that in, in the dark you can get up to the point where you saw them before? Porco and Nako. Oh, I was talking to Lumero. Like, do you think, even if you're unable to see, you can at least walk in to the point where you were before? Because it was, here's what, what, I'm it was what, about 15 paces into the cave? I think I could I'll count it out and stop. Here's what I'm thinking. We both go in, and I'll just spring the light spell on your shield right away, and that'll be the two to go. Okay. We can make that happen. I'll walk 10 paces into the cave, spring the light spell on your shield. The two well, the 10 paces, just... Where are you guys exactly? Let's. Outside, okay, point. I mean, okay. Like here somewhere. Oh, okay. So if you move ten paces, because each square is five feet. And there are only one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, so he's gonna try to remember where he was before. It's the basic idea, like however much distance that is, right? I mean, we walked. We walked about here. Right. Okay. So, so you want to land there again? Right. I want to land about here again. So I'm going to count. Ten spaces, which should be about thirty feet. Not ten, ten spots. I'm talking as if I'm in the game, right? Ten, ten walking paces. Right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We'll uh, we'll say uh, we'll say I'm gonna walk seven paces right here. All right. All right. So you move yourself forward. Let's just do that. Give you your token of where you are. And I can move my token. Okay. And I'm going to be like right yep. behind it. Alright. Sword and shield ready. Sword and shield at the ready. I thought I gave you. And before I move, lock one, it's on you. Yeah, as soon as I sense him, like as soon as I sense him stop moving, I'm waiting just a moment to give. Uh, Nathan and Corporal a moment to position, and then I'm going to cast light on the shield. Okay. And I'm trying to position inside of the cave so that I could attack them. Yeah, yeah, wait. Or... Wait. So the idea is that we are sneaking up, and then before we do anything, you're putting the light on? No. Be... Well, you guys wouldn't be able to. I mean, you yeah, the idea is to draw their attention. So you get your sneak attack. Or one sneak attack, and now go can also attack with an attack of opportunity. Sure. Because right. if you if you can walk behind me, you should be able to uh, get behind them and backstab them, or a cast around me without hurting me. In this little corridor, uh, the the chance of you being able to sneak by them. Without getting attacked, I would say slim, as they are standing in the dark. So I can only assume that they have some kind of dark vision. Because there are no, it is dark, right? It's like pitch black. Yeah, it's not. It's not very illuminated right now, no. Okay, so no torches, no nothing. So that that I, we can only assume that they have some kind of dark vision if they're standing guard. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm leaving this open to anybody else that would like to interject. And the sound sounds fantastic. All right, then I need you two to move uh, within range or behind me or just a little ahead, whatever me. But probably not a little ahead. I don't want them to see you. But uh, with that light spell, Lachlan, how bright is that light spell? If you were to cast it, would they be able to see the people to the left and right of me if they were standing next to me? Or behind probably. me? Probably. I would say that perhaps we should come in one side of the corridor and those two should go on the other side of the corridor. Okay. Then we'll, we'll go on the left side. We'll have you guys go on the right side. 
that way I'm hugging the wall and it's easier for me to walk in anyway. So you guys would be down here. Sound good? Yeah, yeah, each square is 5 feet, right? So it's like uh, yep. 20, 25 to the guy? Yep. Okay, that's fine. All right, so you're gonna you're gonna set out the light spell, try and distract them. Horko's gonna go and attack when they're surprised. And Nalco, what are you doing again? Same thing. I'm gonna try and attack with my. Okay. So you oh, set okay. off the light spell, and you two get your attacks in before we start. With initiative. Yes, sir. So, no, not initiative. Uh, roll. Uh, well, you can roll initiative, but um, this is to hit. Nalco, you miss. Horkle, you hit. All right, and uh, I, I, I guess I, I, I get all my shit off, huh? You get all your shit off. All right, you're going for the one on the right. Of your character. Yes, the bottom of two. Right. I don't know why your tokens got... are missing, because I set them up so they would be there. You still have the... token. No. Oof. Oh. It's okay. Yeah. I did. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's all. Everything's already doubled. Yeah. All right. Um. So you basically just cut this thing's throat out, and you pretty much sever the head. Oh. Um. And its head kind of just falls backwards, and it slumps to the ground. Um. Damn, you are just doing all the damage. Um, and let's see. If you're going to be one true pony, make it a good... Then, fair enough. All right, let's see if I can get a good initiative here. If I don't, Lumeroth's up. Um, let's see. Oh, I got a chance. I didn't. Oh. All right, you're up first. Uh, you. Uh, you did. Oh, all right. Well, and you and you missed. Oh, all right. So now I need everybody else's initiative rolls. Oh, damn. All right, Lachlan, <laughs> Lachlan, you're up. Okay, um, I just want to pass, and I have to look up the stat for this. I think I just want to do a ray of frost out of my wand. Okay. That'll be... Okay. That hits. Uh. You did two damage. Eh. You kind of like frosted its hand and it was like, eh. <laughs> it's slowed. <laughs> there it goes. Eh. For what it's worth. And it does get slowed. Yeah, that's all I got. And it's slowed by 10 feet, right? Yeah. And you. Okay, it can. Ch all right, this yeah. one's dead. I forgot about that. Dead. So we can just make it up to you. And it goes for a swing with multi-attack. With its scimitar. Alright. 19. Yeah, it's going to be tough, but let's see. One, two. Ah, uh, I hit. I hit once. I missed. Um, does not get that. Um... 
That's okay. You take eight demos. Nothing special. All right. So next up is Horkle. Let's see. It's, uh, it's probably about twenty-five feet. Yep. All right. I'll just give it the old rapier attack. And you had advantage. Yep. And sneak attack damage if you make it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you just hit on that second one. Oh. Easy. <laughs> Easy, my ass. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's just your sword, though. Or is that the sneak attack? Uh, that's uh, it's thirteen together. Cause I, I, I oh, thirteen together. Right? No, no, it's not. It, it already took a turn. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It's actually still up. What a dick. Yep. However, you have your sword in its kidney, and it is not happy as it's bleeding out. Um, however, I'm gonna, what? I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, cutting action to disengage from the target. Okay. So you pull your sword out of its kidney and more of its life is pooling onto the floor. You make me sad. Um, let's see. Oh, now, Ko, you get to do something. Yes. All right. Um, all right, I have thought about it. Let's see. I'll just, I'll just... It with. I'll just run up. I have a rapier too. Hopefully, I can. Uh, uh, 18. 18 and hits. Ooh, I'm helping. <laughs> <laughs> Our druid does stuff. Woo. Yeah. Eight up Two plus three. Five damage right there. Nice. Um, five. Well, you come up and you poke it onto the other side of the kidney, and, and then it falls over and dies. Yes. You killed it. Good job. <laughs> I did all the work, guys. Hello. What were you doing? Nothing. I helped. <laughs> With your two damage. Mm -hmm. That's better than nothing. I'm not going to burn a spell slot on that. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, exactly. This is like Horkle is to get the first one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. Uh, all right, so you guys are now standing over a dead body of a dragon claw, and you guys can see a little bit farther into the. Uh, what's up? I said you guys loot it. I was gonna say I bend over and loot the one that is laying right in front of me. Okay. Um, you guys find uh, a, a sim two scimitars. On, you know, one on each of them, which only do 1d6 damage, um, as well as you see a little, you know, like medallion symbol thing of the of the cult again, and leather armor. It's really about it. So sad. A little bit. Horkle. What's up? Why don't you uh, take one of these symbols? And stuff in your bag if we need to use your disguise if we need to disguise again. Uh, I like the way you think. Uh, go ahead and grab one. Pop it in my pouch. What did you pop in your pouch? One of the symbols. Oh, okay. Of, uh, the cult. Gotcha. Gotcha. Do, 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 do. Um, because I'm a fan of disguising, I just grab one too, anyways, because I. <laughs> I will probably want to do something pretty soon. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Holy crap, it's already 10. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, Alright. Alright, uh, we're going to move forward. Sure. Well, like, again, because there is no light, let's move 30 feet forward and let me see. Uh, 
I mean, keep going. I don't check. Yeah. I would like to move. Uh, let's move 30 feet forward again. My shield should still have light on it, correct? Oh, it's good yeah. for an hour. What I would like to do is change the color of the light, which is something I realize I can do. Be something very muted. Um, with the idea being that it's enough to like light our steps, but um, Corporal and Nauko who can see in the dark can go in front of us, and then Lumaroth and I can hang back and not give away our presence, perhaps. Yeah, and Lumafor is there chilling too. If he ever shows up. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you guys keep moving forward. Um, I moved my character 30 feet. Yep. You guys are slowly moving forward. You just kind of see this cavern, um, and you're, you know, it's got some stalagmites, some stalactites. Um, very natural ish looking. You see a little bit of carving, kind of, if they, uh, whoever this is, kind of opened it up a little bit more. But for the most part, it was pretty much as, as big as it is now. Um, and then as you guys keep approaching, you guys are able to see um, that there's stairs off to your left. And then there's uh, another little kind of tunnel-ish thing off to the to the right. Let's, uh, I, like, I like right. Let's move right. Party? Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably the stairs of the main way, so we should explore the side area first. I think that's the right way to go. A, a. We would like to move to the right. To the right. All right. Wow. Actually, yes, that is right. You are right. That is the Cupid Shuffle. Come on, I don't know the song. Uh, Dave, Cupid Shuffle. <laughs> God bless okay. you. says in a hushed voice. Yeah, yeah, I say in a hushed voice. Um, can we take ten? Oh, actually, you know what? Never mind. Screw it. Keep walking. Yeah. Oh, says keep walking. What? Let's, uh, yeah. let's, <laughs> let's hug the wall on the right side and uh, try and follow that around. Kind of, kind of walk this like you would walk a uh, house of mirrors. Not that my character knows a house of mirrors, but you guys understand that. No. Not you guys, the cat. Oh. The cat was going to come up and sit up with me, and that's fine, except for this is where my mouse oh. is. <laughs> I was like, the cat? What? <laughs> yeah, there's a, I have a kitty that's running away now. She's mad at me. Uh, yeah. As I put my hand in the right wall, I say, let's follow the wall around to the right-hand side, so at least we know we can try to figure out where we're going. If we make up to a larger passage or something, we can decide if we want to go left or right from there. Okay, well... As you guys are heading toward that direction, uh, it gets actually a little bit smaller. Um, it's not a tight fit, but you guys can't have like you can't have the like two of you standing next to each other. It has to be more of a single file ish. Otherwise, you'll just be crushing somebody or stepping on somebody. Um, this this area seems to be a little bit more uh, man made, uh, more than something natural. Um, it's got rough cuts. It's not very well done. So it's clearly it's not like a dwarf. Uh, there'd be room to swing if you were alone. Like, single file, but not just... You would probably cut off somebody's head of sure, your yeah, group. Uh, yeah. If I, was by my, if, if I was standing in front, I have room to swing my sword. Sure. Yeah, and a thought given the construction of this area, whoever is in front should be fairly careful for traps at this point. I. Okay. Wouldn't Horkle be good at that? What uh, uh out of out of game? What would be? How would I know if I'm good at seeing traps or not? Like, what would that be tied to? Uh, for traps, it would just be perception. Um. Pretty shit perception. Oh. Really? I well yeah I would, my my character stats are not great for the character because I was gonna be an arcane trickster and then our other one was gonna be an arcane trickster so I went assassin. Ah, um, let's see, yeah, but you'd still, you'd still have kind of a, you have thieves tools though, right? 
Yeah, I mean, disarming them, I'm not worried about. I have, well, like, uh, great sleight of hand and stuff, but... Right. Yeah, but you could, would you would still, you know, with with the fact that you have the thief background, are you an assassin? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you would just be at a normal perception level, like everyone else. Uh, Nauko, or Marco, like, what's your... Our are perception. you on that? Yeah. Uh, perception should be okay. It should be actually pretty good. Uh, plus five. I'm just thinking yeah. you might be the best in our party for damage. Oh, hi. I'm like, fine, I'll go in the front. I don't you know. came up anyway. Alright, come here. Oh, the kitty. Oh, the kitty cat! Fat kitty. <laughs> Use a fat kitty. Yeah. Alright. That's the best type of cat. Alright. Right. I love you, but you gotta go down. The hell, how did you get that on you? Oh my god. Whatever. Anyway. Fat kitty. Um, uh, okay, so Naoko is going up front. Naoko, go up front, roll perception check. You're making the lady do it. Yeah, exactly. I just kind of look at him and shrug. I'm like, ah. Uh, I will be behind him. Or her. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'll do a perception. You know what? No. I'm going to cast my second level spell, Find Traps. Which says, anything within 120 feet. Let's see it. A trap for the purpose of the spell includes anything that would inflict sudden or unexpected effects that could be harmful or undesired. Um, thus, the spell was sent in uh, an area affected by an alarm spell, too. A glyph of warning, even a mechanical pitch trap. But it would not reveal like a natural weakness in the floor, though. Right. Like so it would be like, you know, like like you were on a wooden plank and there was termites and you fell through it wouldn't tell you that it was a termite ridden yeah, it board. Like Mouse, right? there by someone. And it's within 120 feet I cast this. Is it a radius? Wow. Can you see those two walls? Do they glow for you radius? Walls? If I'm mean, more of is it a straight line or is it walls? It doesn't last it, a amount of time. It just says 120 feet. I don't see anything. Um, that should be a radius. Of a trap within the range, yeah. Um, How much that is within for? line of sight. Uh, I don't okay. really have any line of sight, huh? Well, you do if you walk down the hall. You make sure there's no traps down as we walk down the hall. Does it last for what? a period of time? It says instantaneous. Um, maybe I don't want to cast that if I can't see anything. So. How many second level spell slots do you have? Um, probably two. Probably two. Yeah. Here, I'll tell you what. I'll sneak up behind her and help her look as well. Like, I'm I'll small. Do... I should be able to fit in and look yep. at that as well. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, now, Co, you can... Yep. And then roll again for advantage, because Lachlan's helping you. Okay. Good. The first one sucked. Nine plus five would be fourteen. And then the second one, uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, you are actually able to discern as you guys are getting ready to turn that corner. You guys are looking out. You actually see that there are some guards, and they are actually heading straight towards you. What? And I need. Is that a trap? Do guards? No, they were doing a perception to find oh. traps. Yeah. It, he, did, he didn't do the spell. Right, right. right. Yep. I'm going to motion to the group, and what I want to do is, like, hit everybody. Yeah. Let's fan out. Uh, three All right. on the left wall, three on the right. Well, I need everybody to roll initiative before they can run away. You are told to run away, so you guys are in the motion of that. Ooh. Okay, not, not as as... Oh, wait, I re-roll. Oh, I was hoping you'd forget. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, really hoping. Alright. Alright. Alright, so now Co got a thirteen. Luma four is not here. Luma Roth got a th Whopping three. Aquan got a 17. Well, that's pretty good. Horko got a nine. 
Alright. And then descending. And then I'm going to oop, I wanted that out actually. And then we've got a few people. And I don't have them set up. Okay, that's fine. Alright, so let's just roll for the two groups. And a three. Well, that helps. Nice. Um, and then... And then a 21. Alright. Alright, so the guards get to go first. There are three of them. What type of guards? What are they? They're just humans. Okay. Nothing special. Draped in cloaks? Draped in cloaks? That's what I'm asking. Are they, are they, in, are they in cloaks? Are they in armor? How do they, what do they look like? Uh, they just have armor. They're nothing. Like I said, they're nothing special. Okay. They look more like a mercenary band than anything else. Okay. So, and then the other ones are cultists. There's eight of those. Uh, um, do, 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 do. Where is my guard? You guys are moving a lot faster than I expected. G is after gargoyle, though. Giant spider. Guard, okay. So I said there were three of them, and they're going to take alternating attacks on the two in front of them, which is Nauko and um, Lachlan. Lachlan, how long does your mage armor last? Eight hours. Okay, so that's still up. Plus three to hit. All right. So let's see. You were Nalco was on the left, Lachlan would be on the their right. So let's do it this way. So first two that was to the left and that's the right. Um Nalco was on the left and Lachlan was on the right. Um natural twenty. Yeah. I, um, it, does a nineteen hit you, Lachlan? Well, so I'm going to expend a first level spell to cast shield. Um, Can you do that? Action. Okay. So, so that means that the, the 20 will still, not the 19. The 19 would not hit you? Correct. Okay. My AC jumps to 21. Right. Okay. Um, I need to do a ranged attack as well. I will but... divine spark. Ooh. Right I... Okay. And a Lachlan or Nauko? Whoever's being hit. Uh, Nauko is being hit. Then I will do it to Nauko. Because I have to do it on somebody that's being hit. Right. Right, okay. So, their thing, it's so pitiful. Um, what do you six plus one? All right. That, that. So you would take eight damage because it's still natural twenty, so it still goes so through you. Attack before I take the damage, though. Is it an, it's an, it's Wait, I thought the natural twenty was against me. It was divine sparking to Nauko. No, the 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 natural twenty was to Nauko. The nineteen uh, was to you. Oh, then I'm not going to use shield because that'll hit me anyway. And then the other one would have just missed, right? The 19 would have hit. The 19 would have hit without your uh, shield included, because you said you went up to 21. Wait, what were the what, what were the two attacks against me? What were the numbers? It was just the 19. I hadn't figured out who the uh, third okay. attack was. Okay. I was doing one because okay. there was three people that are going, but one's gonna I, do it now. I didn't realize that I wasn't reading. Okay. 
You're not being hit, so he's going to Nalco, who's being hit. Yep. Um, and yes, you... Uh, I get an attack before I take the damage, right? Uh, no, you still take the damage. Okay. But you, you automatically hit them back, so you just do the damage. Right. Yeah. Do that. And then... Oof. Alright. Well, you take 8 damage. But you kill the other guy. Which puts me at 8 life, actually. Whoa. What? It puts you at 8 life? You had... Oh, right, because you took damage from before, too. Right, right, right. Yeah. I remember now. If it was anything else but the natural 20, I think you would have... It would have missed you. Because you get the plus 2 to AC. But it was a natural 20, so it hits. Um, right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it is completely dead as your reaction, and the third one is aiming towards you, Lachlan, but it still has, you're still at 21, correct? Yeah. Because of the shield? 21 all the way till my turn. Right, okay. So it misses. It was an arrow that just whizzes right by. He shot too high. Alright, so next up is... Lachlan, you're up. Okay, um, how is everybody positioned? Like, are they sort of clumped up? Um, uh, they're basically clumped up because it's a narrow corridor. Um, so you got the two, you got a guard right in f front of you that's still up, a guard by about f 10 feet back, and the cultists are all kind of rushing around the corner at the time. Okay, so what I'm trying to figure out is can I cast Ice Storm uh, all of them without hitting us. Well, let me read. Ice Storm. Is that a area of effect, or is that a... Effect, 20 foot radius, uh, 40 foot high cylinder, basically the entire cave, I'm thinking. You get to pick um, the point, though, correct? And yeah, I can choose the point anywhere within 300 feet. A cave is oh. 30 feet tall. Uh, 15 feet tall. But he can still do it. Right. Yeah. But, you know, there are more, there are bigger creatures that, that could do more damage. Um, yeah, you would be able to see 20 feet in front of you, and you would be able to hit, I said 8, they would each take about a space. You could hit the two guards and about five cultists. There'd still be three that would be catching up, but you could hit the majority of what's coming after you. Okay. Um, I mean, it is free. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's do it. I'm going to go ahead and cast that. So it's a uh, dexterity save, DC 15. DC 15? Yep. Yep. Um, that would be dexterity. I would assume... Um, guard. The first amount legending and the second amount cold. Holy God. It's half if they say. Oh, oh. All right. Um, I don't think it's going to matter. All right. So for the two groups, one say, uh, the guards in front of you say, but the cultists do not. So the guards take 13 damage. You make everybody within the area of effect a frozen, solid piece of person. And we got your back. Nice. Uh, and uh, right now we'll be out of initiative because the cultists, the last three, kind of just ran away like little scared bitches that they are. Um, and yeah, you just froze, That's which will make things difficult to be able to move because now it's... It's difficult terrain. As a uh, attack of opportunity, can we shoot the cultists that are running away? Can we see them through you, the buff? You can't. They saw their friends just freeze, and they're like, fuck this. Okay. But you don't know where they ran, because they were kind of... Okay. Yeah. Their friends were blocking the way. And the corridor, yeah. That's why I asked. Yep. 
Yeah, although it's only difficult terrain for another turn, so it's a, it's a few seconds. It's difficult. What? It's only difficult terrain until my next turn. So if we're out of initiative, it would be like five, ten seconds. It's hard to walk through, and then it all like melts away. It would melt instantly, melt and drop. Right, but you froze the body solid. The uh, bodies are the problem. Yeah, the ice storm is fine. The frozen bodies are a problem. I, since we are out of initiative and out of combat, I'm going to cast lay on hands on myself. It's five times my paladin's level, which is fifteen, so I'm going to heal myself in fifteen. Okay. That expends my pool and play rest. Yep. I'm back up to twenty-three. Fantastic. Uh, speaking of, did those packs they give us uh, have any potions in them, or does anybody I want to ask parties anyone else have a potion on them? I have got one if we need. Alright, we have one potion. Does anyone else have a potion? Nalco? Oh, I have mm. healing. I have spells. Okay. Porkle? Nope. Alright, we've got a potion and some healing. Alright, I just want to make sure that we know, that I know where we are at. Okay. So, uh, give me a, give me a medicine check. Who? You. Uh, you each have a singular health potion in your pack. One singular health potion. That's not an additional one for me. No, no, it's, you would have an additional one, yeah. In your pack that you received from Governor Hill, there's uh, all one potion of healing. If he had rolled that natural 20, there would have been two in each pack. <laughs> uh -huh. Unfortunate. But hey, one health yeah. potion each is great. It's still helpful. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, so in front of us, um, can I assume there are two bodies standing next to each other that are a frozen block of ice that we cannot walk around or it is dangerous? To uh, no, you can walk around them, but it's very difficult, especially for you and your brother. Um, because you guys are bigger guys, and you have armor on. Well, you have armor on, so it's even tougher for you um, to move around these things. Because they're kind of just frozen in place, like mid-swing, or... I skip merrily by like a schoolgirl. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, since they are frozen, I follow. How, uh, how frozen are we talking? Can I take a swift kick to one of them and try to uh, shatter it? Or take my sword and try to shatter I don't want to shatter my sword, so that's not a good idea. Uh... <laughs> Uh, give me a athletics check. Athletics or strength? If I well, if you want to kick it, you're gonna be more uh, athletic. Uh, do you want to? If you want to do straight strength, you can. I mean, athletics is basically strength. It's like strength. yeah, oh, it is. it's strength plus. So that's this. The first one you hit is solid. Right. <laughs> the thing doesn't even move. What about the second one? Here Try again. That one you're able to knock over, and uh, one arm kind of falls off and slides toward uh, toward Lachlan as he's skipping merrily. Give me a dexterity <laughs> saving throw. Okay, you skip right over it. You're like, <laughs> whatever, whatever this thing is. We're going to walk over the toppled body and All right. move forward. All right, so you move forward, and then you see a line of cultist bodies. Five of them literally in, like, a domino row. All frozen solid? All you know frozen solid. You know what to do. Domino row, come on. All right, domino row, here we go. Oh! <laughs> he pushes over the first one with ease, and the rest of them go down like dominoes, all <laughs> shattering at different points on the body. So the first one, its neck snaps. The next one, it's butt at the butt point. It snaps. Then the chest, and then the legs. <laughs> yep, pretty much. And there's different shattering points all the way to the end. I look back a little bit, briefly rethink my path in life, and then dismiss the thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as we move forward, what do we uh, after? I'm gonna walk forward to the end of the domino row. Uh, what do we see? Uh, you actually see a barracks. Wait, which way did you guys go? To the right? You didn't, you didn't say left. We're hugging the right oh. wall. Yeah, but we are hugging the right wall. You were hugging the right wall. I assumed you just kept, just kept going straight. Uh, to the right. 
um, Oh, okay. Nope. All right. So going to the right, uh, that's actually, uh, you guys noticed that there are, um, it's mostly empty, but there are some overturned boxes, broken items, some coins, some gems, and there is one cultist sleeping soundly on the ground in the middle. Hey, Horkle. Uh, this is a Horkle. <laughs> Can you, uh, can I you, just nod. Uh, I not, immediately nod not, and walk up to him. Let's not kill him. I'm already pulling out my rapier, and I look very disappointed. <laughs> yeah. bring, bring him within inches of his life. All right. I, uh, he's, he's laying down. Oh, there are wine bottles all around him. He is a fucking drunk right now. <laughs> oh. That's all the rum gone. Alright, I, uh, I take out my rapier and I give him a shake to see if I can wake him up. He doesn't move. I just kind of look back. Uh, he's, he, he's, he's gone. Sh should I just take care of this? I turn around and start whistling very, very softly. I'm gonna. I will uh, turn around and start. Uh, well, you said we saw gems and whatnot. Um, I'd like to. Uh, do we see gold? Is there gold or chests or yeah, anything? What do I see? Uh, give me a perception. Right. Two in a row, baby. Two in a row, total of twenty. Um, you just see a few scattered coins and. Um, and some gems, it's... Altogether, you only find, like, 16 gold pieces worth of stuff. I'm happy to pick up 16 gold pieces, because that's sure. my cost. Alright, I'm going to stab this guy in the heart real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so you stab him in the heart, and he dies. He doesn't even know that he died. Sure. Doesn't even know he died. He doesn't even know he died. I mean, eventually he'll figure it out. But at that time, <laughs> at the time, <laughs> he has no idea. He's just so drunk. His dream is amazing. That'd All right. Be awesome. Like he wakes up, he's like, "Oh shit." <laughs> <laughs> he just like he like looks down. Oh, I'm dead. There's my body. <laughs> oh, at least I was drunk when I died. All, All right. right. Well, I'll keep exploring keep exploring um yeah you guys head toward that way and uh you guys notice that this is actually the barracks room i got my okay. areas mixed up uh, the other one was the treasure room but there really wasn't much treasure which room are we in are we in this one or in the other one you're in this one currently oh okay yep um so, in this room, the barracks, um, you see that there are a total of, let's roll to see how many there are. There are two cultists sleeping on cots. I sigh. Looks like a job for Horkle. Are we in the <laughs> other room? You are in the other room. You see two um, cultists asleep. I, I, I try it again, Horkle. Kill one, they'll spring the other. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna walk. I want. I'd like to walk up to one and uh, pull out my sword and pick it up. Okay. I lean against the, the wall near the doorway and just sort of fiddle with my wand. Alright. I'll pick, if I can, do I need to roll a strike check before this happens? No. Alright, pick him up and shake him. Hey! Wake up! 
<laughs> and he like starts to pull out his sword. Who are you? What do you want? What do you do? Where are we? No, no, nowhere. Who are you? Nobody. You're going to take me through this cave. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> I plus four. I was really hoping. Uh, no, I'm not. There's nothing else in here. This is it. I'm gonna casually just sort of pull out my wand and cast Ray of Frost on the other one. Are you trying to kill the other one that's asleep? Yeah, like, Lumaroth is trying to persuade this guy to do something, so I'm gonna try to popsicle the other one. Alright, so you pop... You're casually popsicling the other one. Yes. I'm starting to feel like... There's no such thing. It is all character development, and that's what makes it great. Um, <laughs> what? what? There's no such thing as a bad influence. It's character development only. Um, roll another persuasion check with advantage. I mean, you just roll it again, but I'll take the higher of the two this time. I will say, as I push him against the wall, we're going to try this again. You're going to take me through this cave. Oh. <laughs> you know, that's when I kind of step in and I said, let a lady handle this. And I just cast Charm Person on, on him, but like blowing a kiss like Ari style, you know? Just kind of like, <laughs> charm him, like with a Charm Person. All right. Which is a DC uh, 13. Uh, let me check to see if it's a negative. That might make a difference for you. <coughs> do, 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 do. Minus three, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's stubborn. She <laughs> doesn't have to take the stubborn one, huh? Yeah, I know. I think we killed the wrong one, guys. <laughs> you might have. Where are you? Uh, no, he still passed. He only had a minus one. So you, you shot it off a little bit more toward Lumeroth, and Lumeroth feels a slight little uh, warming breeze on his cheek for a second there and realizes that Something went awry for a spell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna sigh. Horkle, take care of him. As I as I still hold on to him up against the wall. You know, morally, I say, uh, if you tell me to take care of him, it's the same as you doing it, right? I'm gonna turn a blind eye. I'll drop him and just turn around. All I ask is that you don't turn a blind eye. I'm, I, 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 I am not some little switchblade to whip out when you don't want to do something, you know what I mean? I, I, thought you, I, want, I want you to watch this, and I take out my knife. No, please, sir, don't. Don't kill me. Please don't kill me. And I flay his fingers one at a time. <laughs> As his hands become nubs, he's just like, oh. Blood splurring out all over the place. And then I politely ask him if he would take us through the cave. <laughs> there is nothing else in this cave, I swear to you. Roll a persuasion check, though, Horkle. Uh, yeah. Is that what you're thinking? What? Persuasion. Yeah, I was wondering if you were thinking about intimidation. I was thinking intimidation. You can go either way. Whichever one's higher. Oh, okay. Wow, this guy, this guy, ain't speaking. this guy is not speaking. He is gonna die for this. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> oh, By the way, Lachlan, what's your alignment? Chaotic good. Chaotic good? Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> Good to know. Mm hmm. You'll have to find out, I guess. Well, they're, they're obviously evil. So. True. But the coldness of your, uh, of your ray of frost, no pun intended, uh, might change that good to neutral if you keep it up. Fair enough. Yep. Yeah. Same thing with you, Lumeroth. I'm neutral good. I'm, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, but asking, asking your switch play to kill somebody. No, I, don't. I didn't ask him to kill anybody. I said, I said, you do you. Hmm. All right. I'm gonna turn a blind eye. Oh no. Um. So Horkel, what do you do? He's his. He's now Nubby. He's uh, Nubby the cultist. Is Lumaroth uh, looking, or is he look, is he turn away? No. After that, I turned away. I say, hey, Lumaroth, he wants to tell you something. Horkel. Do you do you stay care. looking away? I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna start walking toward. Uh, Toward the next. I look at the cultist and I said he doesn't want to hear it, and I said it's the. And follow him. And you just drop him and just walk toward him. Yep. Okay. I I uh I want to investigate the room. Sure. Before everybody walks away. If I see anything else besides carnage. Uh, the only thing that you are able to notice um, in the room, for the most part, if I can get to the page here, gave me the specifics, which was actually kind of interesting. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, you notice that they um, that they are wearing uh, a, a a scabbard that has dragon motifs all over it. Um, the the actual scabbard itself is not worth much, um, but you do notice that they they have these special scabbards as compared to the ones that you've seen before, which are basically just leather. Don't pick, you just leave them there. Nothing special. Gotcha. Alright, so you guys head towards this room. To the room to our right, to the next hallway. Yep. Okay. I mean, that, I mean do, I'm sorry, do the scabbards like mean anything to me? They're just different than other scabbards you've seen before and other slain creatures. Okay, okay. noted. Okay. I mean, if you want to make an insight check to see if they mean anything more to you, you can. Um, like, an investigation? Either way. Uh, what do you want? Investigation sounds better. Um... You look at them closer and notice that they have all the all the different dragon colors um, important to the cults of the dragon. And you, um, after looking upon these, you get an idea that maybe these might help you guys get through here easier if you have them. As more of like a, you can deceive your way through if you are carrying them. Okay, I will take it. <laughs> okay. Orkel, are you still wearing that mask? Of course. <laughs> he hasn't taken it off. <laughs> um, I'm gonna squat up um, to the others. Um, hey, I found these, and I'm not exactly sure what they are, but um, they seem potentially important. I haven't seen anything with this. Um, I take 
perhaps you guys might want to hold on to me. Yeah. I'm a little... I, I'm already struggling. I, I take one of the scabbards, that sounds good. Take it, but it's not the magic damage. Next one. Is there a next room, or are we in our final room? They're like here, right? Yeah, I mean, this is all big, one big room at this point. I mean, it's got a little side chamber, but it's mostly just that one room. Um, and as you guys enter the room... Um, you actually see... A woman that you saw before and uh, have heard about uh, go basically this thing is a shoot and okay. she goes through the shoot as you guys enter the room and she cut and then she you hear a kind of a slam as something kind of um, cuts the it sounds like something's cutting off in the shoot see that she ran down the shoot guys we need to we need to wrap back around. There's uh, there's more to this cave than I think we than we uh, see. Okay, uh, really quickly, I'm looking around the room before we go. Is there anything else here, like in this little side chamber? Sure. Um, you guys, uh, you guys see in the chamber it contains a writing desk, a stool, several tables with books and papers, and a mirror on a floor stand. Light comes from two oil lamps. Thick rugs completely cover the floor. Um, and as I said, you guys saw that the uh, shoot was there. Uh, I'm looking through the books. Does it mean say, can, we, can we look through the books? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Spread open. Before you guys do that, spread open around one of the tables is a simple map of the green fields area showing the villages the cult attacked and looted. An arrow is sketched in from the green fields towards the west and the town of Bur Burgost on the tradeway where the arrow turns north. A separate sheet of paper that is covered with numerals and columns containing the note, Everything must be freighted north to Nairtar. Resmir al allowed us to keep some pearls, a ring, and a handful of small stones. Um, the rest of the papers you guys look at are of less interest. Most of them having bad poetry about dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Lachlan, um, on that scroll, can you add this chamber and the information about the town? Uh, yeah, I mean, this looks like a planned route. Um, thinking with the limited word space I have available, I'm just going to add the, the bit about we found some notes and where they're planning to go. Okay. Should do. Let's uh. And that was just in the big main chamber that you guys were looking in. Right. And this is just, this is just the the small entrance of the cave. Let's uh let's let's walk back around, go out to the main entrance, and go take the stairs down and see what else we can find. Uh, I'm sure if we continue to look through that we will find this woman. If uh, if she went down that chamber, I'm sure she has to she has to be somewhere in this cave. Did somebody already check like the little uh, the head of the room, the little part that sticks out? The little side chamber? Yeah. Nope. I'm gonna meander I, in yeah, over I'll there. Check it. Okay. The smaller chamber contains a bed and a trunk, uh, or two trunks, um, that are closed. Not currently. I'm gonna open up one of them. Oh, and while he's doing this, uh, did we leaf through the book? So I wanted to do that. Yeah, I, I what I told you was basically, uh, yeah, yeah, nothing I special. I wanted to check out the side chamber too. So. Sure. As you do, you okay, see, you, you see Horkle opening it up, and throwing around women's clothes all over the place, um, out of the first trunk, and then the second trunk, he l is about to throw something out, but then he notices this. This is a little bit better material. Um, this is, in this trunk, it's containing her personal Cult of the Dragon regalia. Um, basically, her way of showing off her status and 
um, station. Nalco, since you are female. Yeah, I, I freely volunteer to get some of this regalia. Or regalia. What if we don Nalco in the regalia, and we use that to walk through the cave? I mean... We have a medallion and a scabbard. I will point out the somewhat obvious fact that Nalco is a dark elf. Not exactly common. But in, in, in the, the dim, dim light, light you know, there's going to be a way the few cultists that we see that uh, he, he is... Well, we don't know her name, so this could be a tricky. Is there anything in the effects that we found that would indicate the name of the person? Uh, you, you have heard her name before, uh, lightly. Her name is uh, Frudam Mondalath. Here, fru Here, let me spell that out for you. <laughs> There you go. You know, well, just, just for the hell of it, I actually do just start putting on her things. I, I, I'm wearing robes anyway, so I don't really care. I just start putting on her, like, clothing. I'm sure. Just, well, it, looks like, it looks like you're leading this expedition. I'm like, but I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, my voice is deeper when I'm just... No. <laughs> 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 like, but of course! Uh, I can't even go that high. Ugh. <laughs> what if I have a British accent? <laughs> <laughs> it could be interesting. Um, what's up? No, no, no. I was just going to ask you what you guys want to do next. Uh, the only thing I want to do is I don't sense any sort of tingle from these clothes, do I? Like, do they just seem like mundane clothes except for the fact that they're like formal regalia? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, uh... Go back then. I'm a bit concerned that that person may put them more on their guard, but... Are there any other, like, boxes or anything? No, nothing special to loot. I know you like looting. No, I heard the ring and the pearls, and I... They're somewhere. Oh, yeah. No, they're not there. Alright. Well, <laughs> we now have Prulam within the, in the party. Uh, let's head out back toward the steps that we saw previously and make our way through the rest of the cave. Okay, so you guys head back the way you came. Dead bodies, frozen bodies, all littered all over the place. I feel a small tinge of guilt. Take it off and keep walking. Oh, uh, this half, half, half blank. He is something else. Sure make is. It back, make it back out to the steps. Oh, yeah, I was just moving it too. <laughs> um, I got you, boo. Aww. It's probably the nicest thing you've ever said to me. It'll be the nicest thing I ever say to you. You're it that. probably will be. <laughs> Especially during PAX. I don't even want to know what the words that are going to come out of your mouth. Words come out of my mouth are going to be like, all right, boys, we got this. Yeah, right. All right. Uh, so the entrance to the cave ends here at a 100-foot drop-off. To your right, broad steps are roughly hewn into a natural stone ramp. The cavern below is carpeted with a profusion of fungi, ranging from a few inches high to nearly as tall as a human adult. Two paths lead through the fungi, one on the right and one on the left. Can I cast a nature sense to see what kind of idea I get from this fungi? Sure. Oh, and while he's doing that, are we concerned about people coming in behind us after we go down through here? I don't know, are we? Mm. I'm just wondering if I should guard against that. Yeah, whatever. Not worth it. Not a good day for rolling and investigating things. Um, it's a wonderful day. You just kind of see that they're they're just basic fungi. Yeah, I'm like I'm a druid, guys. Don't worry. I know I'm a druid. Don't worry. With a British accent. Yeah, with a British accent. 
That's the only thing I say. In your British accent is just a tug roll somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you just roll your R's and go, oh, it's a British accent. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Through the uh, fungi is how uh, wide is the path, or each path? Uh, each path is about five or six feet. Hello. I I I'd hate to split up, but it might be to our advantage to split up down the two paths and meet at the end, but we don't know how long it is. Uh, party. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't see any reason to suppose it even meets up. Let's, uh, do, do we, are we feeling lucky with the right path then? Can we walk, uh, can we, yeah, five feet. We should be able to walk two by two down the path. Uh, now go. You guys. Why don't you stand here with me and let's walk forward. Yeah, and we're, which one are we choosing? Right path. The right. We're, we're feeling lucky with right, right? I'm like 100% right. confident. I expect these mushrooms up. <laughs> yeah, these mushrooms are good. He runs his hand over them as he walks by. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, we're going to take the steps down and take the right mushroom path forward. Or right fungal path forward. The right fungal path? By right, he means the correct. <laughs> you don't know which one's the correct path, or if there isn't a correct path. Or if there's a path at all. Well, you know that there's a path. In between both of them, right through the mushrooms. <laughs> slicing and dicing. Yeah, let's just poison this fungal uh, fungi out here. All right. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, everybody roll a perception check for me. Yes. Wow. Was that a natural 20 or? No, I had the plus 5 to my perception, so 17. Okay. Alright, so only only Lachlan doesn't see this, but uh, Nalco realizes his her error immediately. There are four violet fungi at the bottom of the stairs taking the right path. And they violet. all... Violet fungi. Yeah, the color violet. I know my voice is bad, but... I violet. Know, but I'm more of asking what is violet um, do we do, do we know that those are uh... only only Nauco knows? Yeah, and what would a violet fungi be? A violet fungi is a purplish mushroom uses its root-like feelers, um, or not its feelers. Uh, it has four stalks protruding from its central mass that lash out its prey, rotting the flesh with the slightest touch. And any creature killed by a violet fungus uh, decomposes rapidly. Okay, so um, I, I just like, I, I kind of say, let's stop. There we go, see that? <laughs> oh, but and, um, yeah. Yeah. That was That was actually more British. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, um, this a little better. However. Julia Child, she didn't have it, a British accent, did she? Who? Doubtfire? Yeah. Doubtfire did. Doubtfire does. Um. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, yes, uh, yeah. These are known as violent, violent, violent. <laughs> violent fungi, yes. Alright, so this, so, one stock from each, uh, one attacks all four of you. You guys notice this, but you guys are hit by it. Holy crap. <laughs> all right, well, we're all dissolved. 
Yeah. <laughs> Get the character sheets out. Yep. <laughs> Guess what? We're starting over, boys. Not yeah. Knowing you all. <laughs> all right. No, no, it's not that bad. All right. So I will even make this fair. I'm going to roll a 1d4 for the first one. Horkle's 1, Lumeroth's 2, Lachlan's 3, Nalco's 4. So the first one who gets hit by the 20 is Horkle. That hits you? Alright, so... Alright. Well, that's, that doesn't matter. You're not going to get it twice. Oh, Lumeroth gets hit by the natural 20. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to change Lachlan and Nalco to... One, two for Lachlan, and three, four for Nelko. Alright, so Lachlan, you get hit by the 16, and Nelko, you get hit by the 17. Do, I know the first two hit. Lachlan, do you get hit? Or you do shield? Shield? Alright, so you don't get hit, and Nelko, does the 17 hit you? Yeah. Okay, so you three get hit. Um, so everybody... But Lachlan takes do, 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 um, 1d8 flat. Okay. So everybody takes 2 necrotic damage, but Lumeroth, you take an additional 7. Christ. So you take 9 damage. No. So what do you guys do? Now, are there just like four of them close that we can like just rush past, or are there? Uh, you could try to run past, but they have four stalks that all would get uh, opportunities of attack okay. as you guys so ran by. What I would like to do is jump back and just start ray of frosting. Okay. Do the rest of you guys jump back? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Alright, so you all jump back, and you do a Ray of Frost with your wand? Yeah, I'll just keep Ray of Frosting all of them. <laughs> okay. I mean, unless uh, they can move. No, they can't move, so you eventually freeze them. They're frozen solid. Um, they do try and, like, attack you, though, but they can't reach you. They're whipping around and everything. Um, and they eventually die. Team out there. Whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Dramatic. Swish and flick. <laughs> if you did that, we we would have a real problem because then you'd have flying violet fungi. I don't think anybody wants that. Wow, you're up to plus 15 to impressed. Yeah, I'm getting impressed by my party today. <laughs> They're coming up with good things. So now that they're dead, do you guys continue on the right path or go to the left path? Well, the choice is yours. For a reason, right? I can't imagine the left path. Left. Hard to say. I might as well continue on. And, I feel uh, like there should be a correct path because that's the one the acolytes or whatever take, so... They probably know that the right one's bad, so they would take the left, right? Yeah, I have something. Oh, Unless this is guarding right. something that they're not supposed to get to all the time. I like the thought processes. Let's flip a coin. Well, didn't Lacton already freeze them all though? Like, shouldn't we just already walk down it? Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. make it go to waste. All right. I'm walking. <laughs> All right, um, so you guys walk along the path, and you guys see that there is a bridge above your head as you keep walking toward it, um, it's about 15 feet up. Yep. 
15, 20 feet up off the ground. And you guys know, also notice that going forward there, uh, you guys hear a noise um, that's familiar to everybody. It's the sound of bats kind of floating around up uh, in the ceiling. But there's a large number of bats. Great. This cave is getting uh, better and better with every step that we take. Uh, let's, uh... Great. Uh, let's uh, let's continue on and uh, move forward to the closest stalactite. And if it gets really bad, there's always the runaway and call for help option. Right. The oh ship option of just run away and ask for help. Um, everybody, roll a perception check for me. Um, okay, so everybody but Lumeroth notices that there are dead bats uh, littered about in random uh, places, basically, on the floor. Um, okay. But they, um, they don't look naturally dead. They look like they were killed. Uh-oh. Guys, this... <laughs> is there, it's either wrong or it's very, very right because something is here. I shed a tear for the bass. <laughs> being that I'm a druid. And as he says that, I'm going to chug my health potion. What is the role for the health potion? 2d4 plus um, 2? Yeah. I think it's plus two. Potion of healing. Okay, can you tell me what the potion of healing has its total though? I'm pretty sure that's right though, so you can just go with that. Potion of healing. 2d4 plus two, yep. It's 11.15. I just want to know, do you guys want to keep going, or... I probably should chat. Okay. I got work in the morning, it's better. Agreed. That's why I didn't want to... Because you could go into combat. You could not go into combat. It all yeah, depends on how things... Okay Alright. We'll end it there. You guys, may, you guys have actually made it about halfway through this cavern already. So... That ass. Yeah. Ye <laughs> Plow yeah, that ass. We have a British. Wait, is next week? Is Marco coming next week? Is that what's happening? Is this is it every other week? Yeah. Lock. <laughs> We're gonna have Lock next week. I don't know. I'm kind of digging. Uh, what's her face? Uh, Frulam. It's even like the name of like an old British lady, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> um. Right. You guys are gonna want that asparagus stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um. Asparagus. Yep. Um, Very good point. Let's see. What's the level four? Level four is twenty-seven hundred. I'm checking. Mm -hmm. That sounds right. I think it's twenty-seven hundred. We're close. Yeah, twenty-seven. All right. Uh, so who had a hundred points more than the others? I had. Um, I know I was ahead of people. Okay. Lumroth. Twenty-five hundred. Lachlan. And Horkle? Uh, I have to add mine up. I can do that real quick. Huh? Yeah. The guards were... Uh, 2290? Oh, right. You were missing part of that one because you were playing League instead of joining us. Um, so everybody, um, so anybody who had 2,500 goes up 300 points. Um, Lumeroth, you go up 
300 points as well. Uh, Horkle, you go up to 2,700 flat. Okay. All right. Uh, so 2,700 was level 4? Yep. So everybody will be level 4, but, like, Lachlan and Nauko will be at, like, 2,800. You'll be at 27 and some change, and then Horkle is just going to be a flat 27. Now, I get the ability score improvement. Does that go for your base? Like, if I had 17 strength and did 2, is that going to be at 19 strength? Yes. If I decided to do okay. I yep. That out you can do you can also do one and one, or you can take a feat instead of taking the ability scores. Uh, okay. Yeah. As long as the feat, as long as the feat that you take, you meet the prerequisites for it. Maybe I'll look in the feats then. Okay. Yeah, because you're pretty strong for early level, um, so a feat might not be a bad idea. Um, right. Like if you, especially if you wanted to do like. I don't know, increased fighting ability kind of thing, especially with your awesome crazy sword. Um, that could be helpful. Or I'll have to look up five e feats. Then. Yeah, they're in the player's handbook. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, there's one sixty-five. Yeah, page. I was yeah. I, I actually have that one memorized. <laughs> nice. Yep. That's right. All right, I'll look those up tomorrow. Cool. Yep. And bug me because I know you will. I always do. I know. <laughs> it's fine. I enjoy it. It's actually it's actually nice kind of getting back into D and D. I was out for like a week and a half. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> Not yet. Close. Oh yeah, I'll probably do a feat. Yeah, feats are pretty nice. It's always it's always tough though because you only get so many ability score improvements. So taking a feat can also hurt you later on because you might not be as strong as you want or. Like, in your case, you're not in a bad situation because you don't have any negatives on anything. Um, well, like, like, say, like, I think you said Constitution was a plus one. But Constitution also gives you more health every time you level. Right. So it's like, do I want to take the feat? Do I want to increase my Constitution and then increase something else? It's a lot of thinking because you only have so many spots when you can grow your ability score. This isn't World of Warcraft where you can do it like 18 times because you get to level 70. You're only going to get to level 20, and then you only get it like five times. Does Harazan count as a... Uh... Oh, it doesn't count as a heavy weapon, does it? Okay. Uh, it would normally, but because it's a special sword, it does not. Okay. Yeah. I'll look through all these and read all this shit. Yeah, it's... I love how you guys are having a side conversation over there. All right, I'm out of here, guys. All right, you too, man. Right. Peace. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Good night. See you all next time. Okay. See you next week. See you next week. Right. User disconnected from your channel. Get all soon, Rex. Oh, I just lost. I just lost my voice. That's really it. Oh, okay. yeah, I didn't even get yeah. sick. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I just. Right. That's why I was just like, I'm just gonna go through this night regardless. Okay. I'm not yeah, sick. I I know, there was this chart. Do you know XKCD? No. The webcomic? Uh, there was this chart on it a while ago. It was a chart graphing, like, over the duration of your illness. Like, how how bad you feel versus how bad you sound. I know, I sound like shit. So, like, the point being, the how bad you feel comes way earlier and then tails off, and then you start sounding bad. <laughs> right. So, oh, well. Alright, well, I guess I level my character. Yeah, and you get to level your character, like, with everything. Because I, I don't think that they realize, too, that the other things that they can, um, uh, they also increases their proficiency. Right. Mm-hmm. All the big, I think so. It's level, no, no, I think it's level uh, five. is that level five? It might be level five, I apologize. I think my character in my other game is level Four. Yep, it's level five. Okay. Uh, my character in my game with Karnas is level four, and I knew his proficiency wasn't up yet. So. Yeah, but there's still a lot of cool stuff with level four. Yeah, let me see. So for me, it's just ability scores and an extra second level spell slot, which, mind you, is pretty good. Oh, and actually, also, my ability score improvements are really important because <laughs> taking a halfling, I got no bonus to intelligence, and I only rolled a 15, so. Oof. 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to be, it's definitely going to be interesting. I kind of want to look at the Paladin. Um, and see what cool thing. He, oh, he just gets ability score improvement. I think most classes just get ability score and, like, possibly extra spell slots at level 